My name is Steven Chin with the Guildhall at SGMU, and this tutorial is on the basics of UDK Collision using UDK version May 2011, and the date this video was made is in June 2011. In our last tutorial, we went over the basics of Collision, and what Collision is and does in UDK. In this tutorial, we will learn how to set up basic Collision for UDK to use. There are three methods to creating Collision for UDK. In the UDK editor, we can use the Builder Brush to define Collision. We can also use the KDOP tool to define Collision in the editor. Lastly, we can use an external 3D modeling program to define Collision for UDK. The 3D modeling program we will be using today is 3D Studio Max 2011. However, you can use any modeling program of your choice. Now, although there are three different methods of creating collision for static meshes, you will primarily want to use an external modeling program. The reason you would want to use an external modeling program is for efficiency, workflow purposes, as well as greater control over the resulting collision mesh. However, other than that, there is no difference in the collision that is produced by any of these three methods that we will cover. Let me start by showing you what happens when you have a static mesh without collision. I've already set up a basic world, so let's see what happens when you have a static mesh without any collision on it. As you can see, I walk straight through the barrel. Let's exit out of the test program, and now we will use the Builder Brush to define collision for the barrel. Since the barrel is a cylinder shape, we will use the Cylinder Brush to create the mesh for it. So let's move the Builder Brush over our mesh and try to match up the shapes as closely as possible. In this case, our brush is a little big, so we'll adjust the size. Now that builder brush is much more closely matching the contours of the barrel. It's not too complicated, but it still matches the contours fairly closely. Once you have matched your builder brush to the static mesh, you want to select the static mesh in the window. After selecting it, right click to bring up a context sensitive menu, and then find the option labeled set collision from builder brush, shown here. Left click on that, and that will create a collision mesh for your static object. To test that out, let's go back into the level. As you can see, I now walk right into the barrel and it impedes my movement. Let's exit out of this and I'll show you how to use the KDOP tool to also add collision to the model. First, you must find your static mesh in your content browser. To access the KDOP tool, double click on the object to open up the static mesh editor with the object inside of it. As you can see, it brings up our object, but you won't see much in terms of collision. To fix that, in order to see what's going on, go up to View and select Collision. Now through the Static Mesh Editor, you can also remove collision. We'll remove it now so you can see where the option is located. If you go to the Collision menu, you'll find the option at the bottom. Simply select Remove Collision, confirm the deletion, and your collision will be deleted. Now the collision menu also has the KDOP tool options. As you can see, there are a number of different options available for you. There is 6 DOP, 10 DOP X, Y, and Z, 18 DOP, and 26 DOP. The number in front of each option is the number of polygons the DOP tool will use when creating the collision mesh for us. For the X, Y, and Z options, that will influence which axis the tool will favor when creating collision. In this tutorial, I will simply go through each option so you can see the effects. We'll start with 6 DOP. Let's select that, and as you can see, it creates our collision. Let's rotate the object to see the results of the mesh. As you can see, it uses 6 polygons, or a cube, to create our collision. Let's go back up to the collision menu and select the 10 DOP option. We'll replace our current collision, and as you can see, it uses a few additional polygons primarily among the borders in an attempt to match the shape. If you select the other different options and replace it, the extra polygons will appear in different places along the edges. However, as you can see, it also does not produce a very accurate collision to match our barrel. Let's try some of the other options to see if we can get something better. We'll move up to the 18 DOP Simplified Collision option and select that. We'll replace our existing collision and see what happens. As you can see, it now produces a much more accurate collision model that wraps around our barrel 
but also has a little bit of extra collision on the edges. Let's go up to the collision menu and see if the 26 DOP option is any better for our, our needs. We'll replace the existing collision and see what happens. In this case, the 26 DOP option did not change much other than adding a few extra polygons along the edges of the barrel. Since this was not much better, we'll go back to the 18 DOP option. Now with this tool, you will not be able to adjust the collision mesh much beyond what the tool gives you. In the case of this barrel, for instance, it will produce a less efficient collision model, as you can see, because it adds those additional polygons. In the next part of this tutorial, we will show how to add collision in our 3D modeling program. Now let's open up our 3D modeling program so we can add collision that way. As you can see, I already have a basic model opened up. Create collision for this for UDK, simply create an additional mesh for the object. For the purposes of this tutorial, I will be using a box, but when making an actual collision mesh, you will want to more closely conform to the contours of the shape. Let's create that collision mesh now. I've skipped ahead a little bit and created a simple box for our collision mesh. If I move the box around, you can see that the existing static mesh is still there. Let's put that back and do one final step before we are able to use this mesh as collision. We would need to rename the collision mesh so that UDK knows to use it as collision instead of as a part of the object. The name we will want to give the object is MCDCX and this will tell UDK to use that object as collision when we export it. To export an object from Max, make sure you select both the collision mesh and the object itself and, and export it as an ASCII scene export ASE file. You can call it whatever you wish, however it is good convention to name it something sensible. In this case we will call it PowerCore ASE. And you will want to select the following options Mesh Definition, Materials, Mesh Normals, Mapping Coordinates, Geometric, and hit OK. And that will export your model for you. However, in many cases you will find that you will need more collision than simply a single mesh object. In many cases, however, you will find that a single collision mesh is not optimal. For instance, when creating an archway, you will have the sides as well as the top, but the center will be clear. You could either create this with multiple static objects with their own collision. If this is inefficient, it makes it a little more difficult to design and place these objects properly. Alternatively, you can create this a single static mesh and use multiple objects to define the collision. To do this, open your static mesh as normal and add additional collision meshes to the object. I've skipped ahead a little bit after I've created the collision mesh for this object. After you've created the multiple meshes, you want to be sure that they are not intersecting with each other. If necessary, you can put a gap between each collision mesh in order to ensure this. After this is done, you will once again have to rename each object with MCDCX. To avoid confusion, you can add a suffix to each object after the MCDCX name using an underscore. Unreal will still be able to know that each of these objects is a collision mesh and will ignore the additional suffix. Now in addition to the MCDCX modifier, there are three other options you can use when creating a collision mesh in a 3D modeling program. There are MCDSP, MCDCY, and MCDBX. In most cases, you will not need to use these modifiers since they are used with Karma which is an alternative physics engine within UDK. After properly naming each of the different collision meshes, select the object and all the collision meshes as before and export as normal. Once that is done, you can then go into your content browser and import the mesh. UDK will automatically create the collision based off the MCDCS meshes and create collision for you. That covers the basics of creating UDK collision. Thank you for listening to this tutorial and have a good day.